And so now let's have a look at the sciency bit, the part of the thing that explains exactly what exactly is going on here in terms of science. Strategies that you choose will depend on whether the game is one shot repeated. You should remember that idea of prisoner's dilemma is that if it's a one off, you may have no idea how the other person could behave. But if the game is repeated, well, what will change? Well, the actual is because it's sequential one after another, you can actually start to work out what your opponent is likely to do or what your erstwhile colleague is likely to do. And so you can make decisions based on previous decisions and that starts to influence you. So you can reward people for good decisions in the past, for brave decisions in the past, for helpful decisions in the past, and you can punish them for the same. Players interact by doing this thing then, they call a repeated game. Repeated games encourage two things. They can either encourage cooperation, i.e. working together, such as the prisoner's dilemma, or they can consider avoidance, where you'll try and avoid one another and steer away from something such as in chicken. This strategy, a strategy developed on past moves, says it allows for reputation effects, i.e. if somebody has a reputation for helping, you'll go with them, or if somebody has a reputation for betraying, then you'll probably end up defaulting, you'll probably go for retribution. In infinitely repeat games are trigger strategies. A trigger strategy is where, for instance, somebody will normally not defect, will normally actually, say, refuse to confess, but as soon as somebody confesses once, they may repeatedly then, say, five times on the trot, confess and punish the other person for them. Or they may do tit for tat, which is that what you do this time is what they did last time. It's a very straightforward strategy. And it's sort of this is a kind of tit for tat uh, idea. If he raises prices, you raise your price. It's the opposite of a normal type price war. The assumption, of course, is that uh, they have certain perfect information. Okay, so for instance, in chess, you know how to make perfect information, but often in most games, the whole point is that you have imperfect information. But there are certain things that we assume that you know. We certainly, as we said at the beginning, we assume that you know what you will get for your various decisions and they are fixed. Obviously, depending on what other people at. Right, they are people on the whole, it is both a risk neutral person. So that means that person will actually say difference between £25 pounds for a certain or a 25% chance of earning £100, pounds, a 75% chance of earning a pound, nothing. This, of course, flies in the case of the fact that we know that people actually have a diminishing marginal marginal utility, which means that the more money, the more there may be. Some people who need twenty-five pounds will be more likely to take a twenty-five pounds instead of a twenty-five chance of a hundred pounds. People who need the money less may well be said, "Oh well, twenty-five pounds makes little difference to me. It's worth hanging on for a hundred pounds." So if we can relax this assumption, we can create certain risk-averse behaviours among people if we know, for instance, that they are more likely to to need some payoff. It's that the players are behaving rationally. So there is some limit to, cl limit to cl neoclassical economics. And we understand they always make the same decision. We don't allow for emotional, etc., things that affect that. And we, under we expect that people do know the rules of the game. So that if one person knows X, we assume everybody knows X. And this goes on ad infinitum. And we assume that people are looking towards getting towards equilibriums. What we mean by that is as soon as players reach a point where they cannot respond and get a better response to the strategy of other players, there will not be some external incentive that will encourage them to change. Once something has been balanced out in equilibrium, then they will stay as an equilibrium. Important thing to remember, equilibrium is not the best possible outcome. Equilibrium is, is a stable outcome. I, if you were to actually know somehow what the decision of your opponent or your colleague was, you would not you would not have a better way of changing to a better one. Uh, okay, sometimes people will actually mix equilibriums up that they will have an equal different their equilibrium will depend on previous decisions. If it is a game that is sequential, if the games are being played repeatedly, if we have a cycle of games. Uh, the strengths of game theory, it is very rigorous. It is a more secure Analysts of markets and organizations than normal neoclassical economics, which has failed as it treats everything as price competition. It allows us a way of looking at it, and it allows us a way of thinking about the way people think, it allows the way of thinking about the way people react, and it allows us to look at implications. It also allows us perhaps to tw twist the rules of the game, adjust the rules of the game, and see what effect that will have. 
it is a deals with competitive situation with closely matched players, and I've, I've, it doesn't assume that some people are massively outgun other people. And it will often be about things like pricing, advertising budgets, capacity production decisions, new product introductions, and the like. The weaknesses of it, of course, is the fact that many people query its levels of applicability. I mean, the situations are highly stylized, but you don't really expect people to drive at one another playing chicken. We don't really expect people to be able to always talk about locking people up in prison's dilemma. Okay, so we have to take a lot of assumptions. We have to take a lot of highly stylized situations. Although it attempts to deal with dynamic situations, it actually is a series of set piece actions. Each decision is taken, and then we look at the impact of that decision. So it's actually, these are static equilibriums. They're not dynamic, but we're trying to, so we are modeling a dynamic situation while looking at a real example of a dynamic situation. So I assure you before the exam, be familiar with at least two types of games. For those games, understand the interaction, the payoffs, what is equilibria, and some examples of those games in play.